All right, everybody, while you enjoy your food, I will give the devotional message for today, all right? Just enjoy your food and try to listen along. It's from John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. It says, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which, is, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? That is a powerful question. Do you want to get well? That's what Jesus said to him. He looked right at him. He said, Do you want to get well? And Jesus replies, Sir, I have no one to help me get into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. So today we're addressing the topic of mental health, healing from past trauma. In this fallen world in which we live, there are many times when we experience things that harm us, right? We have to go through hard times. Each of us, I'm sure each of us, could list off the traumatic experiences that we've been through in life. Whether we were soldiers in combat or children who went through abuse, or those who struggle with drug addiction or alcoholism, or those who struggle with depression We all have scars along the journey of life. We've been through a lot, and I've been through a lot in my life, as you guys have heard. Uh, I always share just little pieces from my story, Um, but it was always a struggle. My life was always a struggle. Um, From a very early age, I was allergic to almost all foods, so I'd have these stomach aches when I was a baby. My mom says I wouldn't cry, I would scream in, in my crib for hours screaming at the top of my lungs because it hurts so bad. Now, when I began to learn to talk, I developed a stutter. As many of you probably notice, I stutter from time to time. That goes all the way back to when I was young and I was screaming, so that's where that's from. Uh, In school, I got bullied a great deal, and I spent a lot of time as an outcast. Uh, When I was 17, I was expelled from my high school for threatening to blow up the school, And I was shunned by my former friends who thought I was crazy. Now, that sucked. All my friends wouldn't talk to me. When I was 18, this is right after I threatened to blow up the school, I was put in a mental hospital. You gave him a day off of school and he still hated you? When I was 20, I became a serious drug addict. That same year, I experienced serving jail time for the first time for marijuana charges. I struggled with alcoholism and addiction for years after. I fought severe depression and anxiety on a daily basis. When I was 21, I became addicted to cigarettes. When I was 23, I was physically assaulted. When I was 25, I was hospitalized in intensive care for a drug overdose. I attempted suicide twice when I was 26 and 27. I went to rehab and detox about a dozen times over my life. But, but all that madness in my life, amazing that I'm alive, I will tell you this, I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. I'm an overcomer, baby. I'm an overcomer because I'm redeemed. Born again, son of the most high God. Because Jesus came to save sinners, I never have to be a victim. And the moment I let myself believe that I'm a victim, I'm no longer able to heal. Life is messy, right? And sometimes terrible things happen. But I have to keep fighting. We all do. Jesus changes everything. The ultimate source of healing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the doorway. God the Father is the architect, the guide of the plan, and the Holy Spirit is the indwelling presence within us. Jesus Christ does the mighty work within us, but it isn't finished there. We still need to heal and grow, right? You can't just claim Jesus and then go back to your old life. There's a whole new world out there waiting to happen. Faith without works is dead. So, let's look at three ways to gain healing from past struggles and traumas in our lives. 
that's something I've had to work on, you know. How do I heal from all this crazy stuff I've been through? The first step is very simple. Writing. I'm a writer. I love to write. I always got a pen and paper. I'm on my computer. I'm always just writing, 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 writing. And I just want to write my whole story, you know. You should. You, you, you got to write all these things out and uh, just learn to heal from it. I mean, I journal on a daily basis, and I need to, because I need to experience healing. I, I need to write down my deepest thoughts about what's going on in my life. Write it down. Write down what you've gone through. Write your story. Create, this is really cool, you can create a timeline of your life so you can better understand your story. This happened when I was five. This happened when I was eight. This happened when I was 21. This happened when I was 32, you know? These, these landmark moments in our lives that changed our lives forever, you know? We have those landmark moments, whether it was going to Vietnam to be in a war. Of course it's going to change you. Of course it's going to change your life fundamentally. Whether it's getting expelled, you know? Whether it's when, when my parents got divorced. Well, whether it's when I got my second DUI. You know, all those things are landmark moments that mess up my soul. So I got to write it down. I remember I did the timeline once in treatment. And it was amazing to see how my life just went from like, because we did it like on, on a line. So it just like went down and then up and then down again and then up again. It was like, wow, this is really a, a roller coaster my life has been. But I'm convinced many of us don't experience the fullness of God's presence because we have too much wreckage within our souls. But when we clear out those past struggles, we make room for the Spirit of God to fully consume us. I really do believe that. We have so many hurts in our souls that we can't feel good unless we're drunk or on drugs. I know that's how I felt for years. I had so, so much junk in my soul that when I wake up in the morning sober, I was like, I can't feel this way. I feel awful. So I go out and use. Go out and do something, you know? There you go. That's right. So all we have to do is to write those things out. Here's what really happened. And then see it on the paper. And then tell someone else. That's, in the 12 steps, that's a fourth and fifth step. Simple. So why don't you try that? Have you ever tried that? You can come to me and say, here's my story, I want to share it with you. And I will take that to my grave. That's what a, a pastor does. So we, we tell it to someone, and that it loses its power when we do that. We pour it out of ourselves, so it's no longer here, it's out here. And then it can't hurt us anymore. It's really powerful. When I did it with my sponsor... I said all that stuff. You know how long it took me? I'm a writer. It took me 12 hours with him. You received forgiveness. And I, I did that with him for 12 hours. And when I was over, it was like, those things are gone. I'm free. You know? They're not on me anymore. They're not stuck, lodged in here. They're gone. And it made sense. It says in the Bible, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Same sort of concept. So, that, that's a great, just write in a journal. Just, just write out what happened. And you will find healing. Step two. So secondly, study, learn, and grow. Books. Sermons on YouTube. Workbooks. Get these resources and use them for healing. Remember the first book I studied when I first became a Christian was called The Bondage Breaker by Neil T. Anderson. It was an excellent book on how to challenge the lies of the enemy with the truth of God's word. Another powerful workbook I went through was called The Freedom from Depression Workbook. Freedom from Depression Workbook. Man, I, I worked through like 200 pages of that thing, writing stuff out, learning, developing. And I, I started to come free from depression, you know? Started to not, not hurt so bad every day. I could list off all sorts of books, though. I've, li I've read lots of books. But I would recommend the Life Recovery Study Bible and the Celebrate Recovery Study Bible. If you're interested in getting any of those, come talk to me. I can help you get those. But overall, just immerse yourself in healing. When, when I'm at home by myself and I got my computer up, I'm always playing like a sermon on YouTube. I'm listening to some speaker, some motivational Christian speaker. I'm getting that message in here. 
Because otherwise I'm just sitting by myself watching some trash on TV about how bad life is, you know, and it's like, oh, this sucks. I hate my life, you know. But I get that me- good, good message in here. I start to be transformed. I start to live differently. Third, make sure you have a good network of support. You ever heard this? Good network of support? That is always a key. It's usually one of the hardest things for those who have past traumas, right? Like, I always feel different. I feel like no one understands me quite right, you know? So you, you kind of stay away from people. You're like, these people don't really understand. They're all okay. Something's wrong with me. So I isolate. Can anyone relate to that? Where you feel like something is wrong with me, so I hide away. Yeah. But that's not true. Because we all have struggles, okay? Every person you see is fighting a battle that you don't, you don't really know what's going on. Everyone has struggles. We're not so different. We're not so different. We, we, we don't have to, have to isolate ourselves. But I know that's always... I have to fight to stay with people. So I always want to run away, you know? There's more food. So you need, if that's running well, let her know. So... I, I have to force myself to have friendships, to have connections with people, to spend time with people I love, because otherwise I just isolate myself all the time. That is a powerful thing. I, I don't know if any of you have like a, a, a mentor in your life. Do any, any of you have an older person who you see like as a mentor? Okay. See, that, that's kind of lacking in our society now. If you do have that, that's amazing, but a lot of people don't. You know, so there's a lost art of finding someone who's older and wiser and saying, hey, can you kind of just mentor me through life? Share your wisdom with me. What, What do you, how do you do this? You know, how do you do life? So we need communities of support, group support. And one of the best options for this sort of healing is found at a program called Celebrate Recovery. Anyone ever heard of that? Celebrate Recovery? I went to that for the first two and a half years that I got clean and sober. Celebrate Recovery is a place to come with your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And it is a great program. Um, there are other programs available as well for alcohol, for drugs, for gambling. I've been to Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. There's Gambling Anonymous. I haven't been to a Nicotine Anonymous. So when I was trying to quit smoking, I went for a while. It was interesting. They, they just sat around talking about how bad cigarettes were. I guess, all right. Hey, if it works for you. And they, they, they'd all quit, so hey. But the the healing that's found in these programs is through blunt, honest, real discussions. You get that? Blunt, real, honest discussions. Where you really talk real, not not just like, oh, you see the weather? Uh, The other day is pretty, it's getting cold, huh? No, it's like, dude, let me tell you about what happened in my life. My wife left me. My kid hates me. My kid said I hate your guts, dude. I mean... I relapsed again, talking about real stuff. So there's, there's power in that for some reason. I'm not sure why, but there is. So it, it changes your life. We, we have to get down to the deepest struggles we've been through and bring healing in there. So these are the three be- be- best ways I've found to address the issue of healing from past struggles. And we all have those struggles. So in closing, something very important to remember about healing. What was the first thing Jesus Ask the crippled man. Anyone remember? Do you want to get well? Isn't that interesting that Jesus said those words like that? Do you want to get well? I love that. I love how awesome Jesus is so subtle. He's like, do you want to get well? Because a lot of times, when I was drugging and drinking, if, if Jesus came up to me like that in like 2010, 2008, and said... Hey, hey, J- hey, Justin, do you want to get well? And I was being honest that day. If I wasn't a liar that day, I'd say, no, I don't. I don't. Isn't that the fact a lot of the time? We, we don't want to get well. That's why we stay out there. But sometimes we get to that point where we say, you know what? Yes, I do. I'm ready, baby. I'm ready to get well. We say, say yes to Jesus instead of no. And I have to do that today. With every issue, with every sin that crops up in my life, because there are always more things to work on. I have to say to Jesus time and again, yes, Lord, now I'm ready and willing that you should have all of me. I want to get well. 
The cool thing about our Savior, Jesus Christ, is that he takes people like you and me and heals us. And then he compels us to go out and help those with the struggles we have gone through. So let me challenge you, if you've been through some stuff, think about how God can use that to bless others who are hurting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we're wounded healers. You saved us, and now, Lord, we are going to be saved by others. Or, I mean, we, we are going to help save others, Lord, so please use us to bless others as we go out throughout this week. Please be with us through the rest of this time, Lord, at the dinner table. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.